Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Donahue. I'm a sex therapist and author of Sex Outside the Lines. I'm Carly Shortino. I'm the author of Slut Ever. I'm the sex columnist at Vogue.com, and I also host a show called Slut Ever that's about sex on Viceland. So today we're going to talk about Tango's 2018 report on self-pleasure. It is the world's largest study on masturbation. It is across 18 countries. Um, 18,000 people, I think it is. I think it's 13,000. 13,000. But I might be wrong. So that's a lot of stories about sex and masturbation. <laughs> that is. That seems like it's very time consuming. Yes. Um, so the question is, uh, masturbation, why are we so afraid to talk about it? Um, I feel like more and more people are talking about it, obviously, but I grew up in a religious family where actually I was told that masturbation was a sin. Wow. So I'm, that's where I'm coming from. But I actually think I used masturbation as a form of like personal rebellion where I felt like it was like my own personal world where I could like do whatever I want and fuck whoever I wanted. Mm. And I don't know, I feel like it's where I really developed my sexuality and like my kind of like own personal perversion. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do tell, I do tell. <laughs> Well, I think. But that's weird. That's really profound. So, uh, you were raised in a family where masturbation was something that was shameful. We live in a culture that doesn't actually talk about it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. We definitely don't talk to people about doing it or how to do it. How did you get to a place where you were able to be that comfortable? I don't know. Well, I. My sort of like masturbation self discovery moment was sort of interesting, I think, in that. I didn't know what masturbation was, and then I just like worked it out by myself, and I was just like touching myself down there, and then I eventually came, and I thought that I had like discovered something like magical that no one else knew about. Wow. And I've since heard that other people have had that, a similar experience, that they think that they like invented it when they come for the first time. But um, that's how much it wasn't talked about in sort of my world, my family. I came from a place where there was no sex ed. So it was really exciting for me. Um, and then actually, I remember telling my friends about it, and in middle school, we used to like kind of masturbate together, me and my female friends. So that was, I, I don't know, I almost feel like in a way, the fact that it wasn't talked about, like it, we were able to talk about it with each other because we almost like didn't even know it was bad because we yeah. didn't know what it was. I didn't, yeah, I didn't have that experience. You know, um, masturbation was something, I think when I was raised to just stumble into and kind of figure out and I always jokingly say that like you can go meet up with your friends and you can say to them like I hooked up last night it was so hot let me tell you what I did but right. imagine if I showed up at lunch <laughs> yeah. with my male friends yeah. and I said to them guys I had the hottest <laughs> masturbation session last night let me tell you what I did let me show you how I was masturbating it freaks everybody out it because does. it's just like another form of sexuality yeah and to me it's actually I remember interviewing you about a year ago, um, it was actually last May because it was Masturbation May, it's National Masturbation Month. Um, and it was for uh, Tango that I interviewed you. And I was saying like, is there anything that is bad to masturbate about, right? Like obviously when you have sex, you have all of these sort of rules you have to deal with like consent and morality and like the other person's feelings, you know right. what I mean? And then uh, like, do I ever have to worry that masturbating, that I'm masturbating about something and then it's like bad? Right. I mean, I think that's the beauty of masturbation, right? Is that, like you said, it's, it's this one time where it's only about us. We don't have to consider another person's feelings. We don't have to consider um, what is this person thinking about what I'm thinking about. We don't have to be as vulnerable. Like it's a really safe space to work through the kinds of things that turn you on. And to answer your question, no, I think, again, fantasy and masturbation is that safe place where you can let your mind wander to whatever you want. And that's where you don't have to necessarily be concerned. And I think we're better served if we masturbated more. You know, I think the beautiful message that Tango wants to get across is that masturbation is not only healthy, but it's something that we need to have a more sophisticated, elevated conversation around because it's not secondary to partnered sex. It's just as relevant. It's just as meaningful. It's just as important. And um, there's, there's no side effects. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like people still consider masturbation something that you do um, as a replacement for sex, right. right? So it's like you jerk off all the time if you're like a loser. Because you couldn't get a partner or find a partner. Right. right. Where I feel like counterintuitively, I often masturbate more 
um, when I'm getting a lot of sex because I just feel like sexually charged yes. and like stuff yes. going on. Because the more sex you have, the more sex you have. The more you turn on your sexual psychology, the more you're like moving through the world in that erotic way. And what a beautiful way to add and enhance, like infuse joy into moving throughout the day. I mean, we're so afraid of arousal as well. Right? Where if you're at work and you're feeling turned on, we're not socially trained to just like stoke that and to bring that forward, right? We're always like shutting it down and silencing it, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think masturbation um, as a topic is so important. So you're actually supposed to go to the bathroom at work and masturbate if you get turned on at work? Um, I, think, I think you have to be careful uh, <laughs> about the environment and the bathroom in which you work. <laughs> but I mean, it's this beautiful message that just because you're turned on, um, you don't always have to do anything with it or about it. You can just kind of carry it with you throughout the day and then take it home and like direct all that eroticism at your partner or towards yourself at sexuality. And I think like, I mean, you were talking about this earlier that we're at a time where people are talking more about diverse creative forms of sex and people are coming out as being more solo sexed where they're not necessarily um, oriented sexually towards partnered sex. They prefer sex with themselves. More so. Yeah, it's really different for me. Like sometimes I'm in the mood to have sex with another person or like sleep, you know, have fuck my boyfriend. Um, and then sometimes I really am in the mood to masturbate or use right. a sex toy. And it's a different desire a little bit because you want, um, sometimes you just really want to be selfish and you just don't want to move that much. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't want to move that much, which is why a sex toy comes in handy. It does some of the work for you, right? I know. And I really like, um, what I like about Tanga sex toys, um, the female version of it, is that it's soft and it's kind of quiet and it also doesn't replicate a penis, right. which I kind of like because I don't always want to feel like I'm just doing a version of sex with another person but by myself. I, I think it doesn't have to be phallic. Right, which is, which is what the male products as well, which is what this is, is it's a sleeve. Um, and so, like you were saying, it doesn't replicate anatomy. And so a partner doesn't have to feel as though they're being replaced, right? It's just something in addition to. And, you know, I always jokingly talk about my favorite, which is the Tanga egg. Are you familiar with these? Yeah. Okay. So what I love about these is, um, well, A, that they're small. Like yeah. Pocket size for travel. <laughs> yeah. um, or even to take to the office, depending <laughs> on where you work. <laughs> but um, more importantly, one-off. Yeah. Easy. No cleaning. some of us guys are really lazy. Yeah. I just uh, used for the first time the Tanga Flex, which requires cleaning, which by the way, was worth it. <laughs> the Tanga Flex, I just want to put like the, the Dr. D approved little check mark next to it because that's one of my new favorites. Um, but then there's times where you travel and I'm not gonna necessarily maybe have room in my luggage for that, right? Something like this, you can carry it anywhere. And again, it's one use, the lube is in there. Um, you can just use it over the shaft of your penis or you can use it all the way down. It's fun for use with friends. <laughs> is it, does Buy it, six pack. does it feel, yeah. cause obviously I, well, not obviously I guess, but I don't have a penis, everyone. Um, so I don't know what it's like sure. to use these. Does it feel old, different than a hand or another person's body? Um, it does because you're using it. And so I get to decide the level of pressure and the grip. Mm -hmm. And internally, each one has a different internal structure, which is going to change the feeling of your penis being inside there. And again, that's kind of the beauty of this, is that your partner is not responsible for everything, for the totality of your sexuality. And the cups also change in terms of pressure and what's inside the structure. That's cool. Yeah. I actually have used one of these on a dude before. How'd it go? I thought it was good. It was kind of fun because it was sort of approached as a little bit playful. You know, we'd never used... Uh, a male sex, or he had actually never used a or, male sex. Or an egg before. shaped one. Definitely never an egg shaped one, <laughs> but none in general. And I was like, it'll be fun. Right. Which I was like joking. I was like, if you have sex for a really long time, like sometimes your vagina gets like tired. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you need a break. So if you have like a secondary vagina with you <laughs> in egg form. I never thought to frame it that way. That's <laughs> yeah. good. That's good. You, it's like a backup vagina for when you get exhausted. Right. But like, um, that I kind of framed it like that as a joke, but I think he really did like it. It was kind of hot. It's just like a different thing to but do. That's what it is, <laughs> is when you have sex with the same person, if you're in a monogamous <laughs> relationship and you've been them for a long period of time, there's only so much that you and your partner can do. And there's times where, like you said, you might not be up for penetrative sex. 
Yeah. And so a sex toy is something that you can add in to amp the level of arousal and just add a layer of diversity. And that's kind of what I like about it. You know, um, I masturbate often, and so this diversifies that. And also sex with partners. Um, mutual masturbation, which I'm also a big fan of, masturbating with and in front of a partner, whether it's a male or female. Um, so I'm a big fan. Me too. And also what's interesting about masturbation for me, which I've never asked anyone about, I don't think, like, and since you're a sex therapist, I'm just going to use this as free therapy. Please. But um, sometimes I think that masturbating a lot is actually good for my sex life with my partner because, so I have a, I'm in a monogamous relationship. And I think that having, feeling like I have an independent sex life from my partner makes me feel like they're not my whole world in a, in a positive way. Right. You know what I mean? Like I like to feel like I have like my thing that I do without him and that I think about whatever I want and then I can almost like incorporate those fantasies or the things I learned about myself and my body into our sex life. But it's kind of like, it just makes you feel more autonomous and independent. Yeah, and that's so important because every human being's struggle is between wanting to be single and autonomous in the world while at the same time wanting to be in a commitment and to pair bond. And it's always like a ping pong ball between those two drives. And if you're in a committed relationship, it's like, how do I do both? And that's an example of how you do that, where you empower your solohood, your autonomy with masturbation, where your mind can wander. It's just about you. It's not about your partner. Remind you that you're someone on your own. Um, yeah, well said. Well, I'm glad that I'm normal. <laughs> not the normal is the goal. Do we have a question from Facebook? Is that what I was seeing? Yes, we have a question from Facebook. I'll ask you because you're the sex therapist. All right, hit me up. Um, how do I incorporate sex toys in sex with a partner? Where should I start? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, number one, I always say that when you approach your partner to talk to them about your sexuality, meaning what you like, um, what you don't like, what you're interested in doing, that's a huge act of care. That's a huge sign of like, you're important to me, our relationship's important to me, I'm investing in you, so I want you to really understand who I am and I want us to have like really awesome sex together. So approach it with that understanding that like you're giving them the gift of intimacy and knowledge and care. Um, number two, I, I, I think you, you purchase something that's meaningful to you and you bring it home and you talk to them and you see if it's something that's arousing to them and hopefully it is. Um, and then you kind of incorporate it into your sex life, but also be prepared to hear that your partner might not be ready, might be threatened by it, might not be turned on by it. And then again, it becomes something that's just kind of part of your solo sex practice. Right, like, is that normal or is that common, I guess I should say, that um, partners are threatened by the idea of incorporating a sex toy into their sex life? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, we still live in a time where there are some people that feel like if my partner wants something sexually that isn't given by me, then that's a commentary that I'm not enough, they're not turned on by me enough. And you know, everyone's sexuality is so vast, right? Yeah. Our partner doesn't have to give us everything. And masturbation is called solo sex and solo pleasure because it's not supposed to be about the other person. Yeah. Um, and so in healthy relationships, there's a flexibility in that and an allowance for that. So it's almost like, you have to be prepared to, if we're going to suggest you use sex toys in partner mm -hmm. sex, that your partner might be kind of weird about it or threatened by it, but then you have to be able to explain why you think it's important and like just to talk them through their anxiety a little bit. Yeah, and just frame it as, you know, I, I want you to know me more. I want to enjoy more things sexually with you. And I say this to the people that are being approached by someone about use of a sex toy. Say thank you. Say thank you for letting me know more about you. Also, like, raise the bar. Be open to trying things with someone that you feel safe with, with someone that you know you can trust. I always tell people, try things that make you a little anxious sexually. That's when you start, that's how you really move into high arousal. Try things. Which is like, th this is what I always talk about because I feel like we live in this time when, you know, essentially when we grow up, we're told like, try new things, like lean in, play hard, like, yeah. like a sort of, negative experience like professionally right will like teach you something about yourself sure. it will make you wiser but with sex especially with women we're like be safe or you might end up traumatized yeah try new restaurants right right go see films mm. travel the world and go to art exhibits right take but professional just risks not sex yeah yeah sex is always a special case but that's what we call you know sex negativity 
And that's why, again, owning a sex toy and using a sex toy is a huge act of resistance against that. Because you're, you're going into a sex shop where you're ordering something online and you're purchasing something and you're putting it out on your, on your, t on your uh, table or <laughs> you bring it out during sex. And it's a sign that like, I'm not going to be sexually shamed. I'm not going to be body shamed, right? It's also part body shaming. But I agree with you, you know, sex is a value. It is something to be explored. Um, it is something to take seriously. And as you know, with the work you do and the show you do, there's, it's, it's a legitimate form of art. It's a legitimate career. Right. And I, I definitely have, speaking of partners being threatened by sex toys, um, I think often as a woman bringing sex toys into sex, I don't know if this is more common, but I, I think that straight guys or predominantly straight guys mm -hmm. or men who have sex with women or whatever, um, sometimes can think like, oh, I can't make you come. You need your vibrator during sex. And uh, I remember one time I was having sex with this guy and I tried to incorporate my vibrator and he was like, look, I get that you're a feminist or whatever, but like it's kind of weird that you need to use your vibrator during sex. What did I was you like, say? I was like, I love that you think that this is like a political act. <laughs> it's just uh, about pleasure when uh, you yeah. calm down. Um, but I think uh, the thing is that for some women, it actually is hard to come during sex, especially yeah. during penetrative sex without clitoral stimulation, obviously. Right. And a, um, a vibrator can be very, very helpful with that. So some, And also remember this. I always tell guys this too. Remember that um, sometimes a female might be using the vibrator, but you can use it. And then it's you right. using it. It's an extension of you. It's in right. your hands. You're still part of and directing that pleasure. Just like yeah. if a woman's using a sleeve or the egg on a man's penis, like she's directing it, she's controlling the grip, she's controlling the pressure, she's part of that, she's partaking in that. It is still partnered, it can be. I know, it's like, it can definitely be incorporated into what you're doing together. It, it doesn't have to mean like, okay, I'm just gonna be like over here in the corner, like right. jerking off, but- um, Unless you're into that. Right, exactly, it's <laughs> for a different case, time. have at it. But that's why I like the um, Tanga Aroha specifically, the vibrator, because it's, like I said, it's quiet, so it doesn't feel like you're like there's like a jackhammer in the room with you, and also because it's not phallic, so it's not just like and now I'm bringing another penis. Yeah. It's like less intimidating, but um, sometimes for me, when I have a new partner, um, it can take me. It won't be. It's not as easy for me to come like the first time or two that we have sex. Like I have to right. sort of get comfortable and get to know them and to be able to relax. Like I can still have fun if right. I'm not coming, but it's not so easy to come. So sometimes it's almost like I have to break like the orgasm seal. It's like- But see, that's that's so powerful. I mean, I think one of the gifts of what you're talking about the sex toys is it it allows time for that bridge and that warm up period. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of guys think that because they're immediately hard and they're ready for sex, that that means that a female is ready for sex. Right. Right. And female sexuality can take 30 to 45 minutes before they're fully anatomically prepared to be penetrated. Mm -hmm. And so a sex toy allows that time to get warmed up, to relax, to get the right blood flow, to let your body settle down. It's, it's a powerful lead in and a bridge, right? Totally. You can actually think of it like that if you're a guy. It's like you will have to do less work if there's a vibrator involved. Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you will have to do less work. No, it's true. Like, because you want to be wet before you right. have sex, right? And like some people don't realize that. Um, and it does take a while. You know, it, it takes longer than a guy. Sure. Like guys can get boner in like one second. I'm always like impressed by that. But um, with the vibrator, I can be aroused. Like it's like hitting all my nerve endings fast. And I actually have, um, I was talking to a friend of mine. It was a friend of mine's mom. And she was telling me, so she's in her 60s, I guess. And she was telling me that, especially as you get older after um, menopause, that it's, even a longer process to your house yeah. and that a vibrator for her is so useful in her like middle age or whatever because she can it's just like the arousal is expedited yeah when i talk to guys about sex i always tell them um leave a huge window period of buildup and again sex toys are a great way to still be interactive during that buildup but delay penetration as long as possible to allow that buildup yeah um, and i know for me you know, I, I work with insects, you do as well. And so for both of us, we're, we've done the work to be really sexually confident and sex positive. And so I purposefully, if I'm with a new partner or starting to date someone, I leave the sex toys out because I want to have that conversation sooner yeah. than later. I want them to be like, what is that? And I can talk about, oh, it's a tanga sleeve. I masturbate with this. Do you masturbate? And I want to know how comfortable they are talking about mm -hmm. this kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? How I want, I want the topic of sex to come out sooner than later. So. For me, it's really important to like leave these things out. They're good conversation starters. <laughs> well, these at least look good. They're not like, you know what I mean? They're like art vibes. Well, that's what I love about Tanga is they have like a, a beautiful architectural design. Um, so it looks like we have another question. Question from Facebook. 
How can masturbation, oh, can, how can masturbating lead to a better sex life? Well, we're kind of talking a little bit about that. I mean, you know, number one is masturbation, you know, you were saying has really helped you get a better understanding of your sexuality and give you confidence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, masturbation is also about learning how to have your genitals touched and learning what you like so you can ask for that. The mm -hmm. worst sex in the world, and weigh in on this, I'm sure you'll agree, is mind reading sex, where right. I don't really ask for what I want and they don't know because I'm not telling them, so they're gonna guess based on other people they've been with and assume that I like what they think I like yeah. and we're just gonna kind of wing it and make it work and hope it's all good. That's horrible, but through masturbation, I know where I like to be touched and so I can ask for that. Totally, and I think like, I mean obviously there's exceptions to every rule, but across the board, it's more difficult for women to reach orgasm than it is for men, right? right? Like, yes. I didn't make that up. For sure. So, I always say to a lot of the young women who write into Slut Ever, who ask for sex advice, like, I can't come during sex is pretty much the, the most, uh, the question I get asked the most. Yeah. So I'm always like, if you don't know how to make yourself come, it is almost impossible that someone else is going to be able to figure it out. <laughs> Thank God we have a bell. No, that's really powerful. <laughs> Let's underscore that statement. But that, that, is, that is the number one role in sex therapy that I, I use masturbation for okay. is, is just that. Like if you're not able to put the time in and to slow yourself down and work on orgasm at home with yourself, you're probably not going to ask of that from a partner or you're not going to be willing to um, sit there as long as it takes because it can it can take time and you have to have the confidence to say I'm glad you came. I didn't we're gonna be here for another couple of minutes like right. stay with me Well, maybe I should be a sex therapist <laughs> <laughs> You should come work with me. You can be like my little compadre. We'll, yeah. we'll work together You can come in and do the other perspectives, but no, I mean that's that's actually really 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 powerful and, yeah. and that's what masturbation can do is give you the confidence to be willing to kind of ask for what you need It breaks my heart. I work with some women clients where they aren't comfortable asking to have sex in the positions or in the ways that will make them come because they don't want to make the man think he doesn't know what he's doing when he clearly doesn't. You know, ask questions, guys. It's okay. That's actually another powerful act of masculinity is to say, I don't know you. You know, what turns you on, right? Like, see everyone as a virgin. You know, the people that are like, oh, I know how to get people off. I'm like, you must be a horrible lover because <laughs> we're all different, right? Yeah. You can't apply the same standards with everyone. Ask questions. Seriously, and I think that um, you know, we all have our own, like all genders have hurdles that they need to get through when it comes to sex. But I think that for men, you know, having had sex mostly with men throughout my life, like men feel like they have to be knowledgeable about sex, that they have to be like, they have like the moves, right? That it's sort of a signifier of being like good in bed or being macho or masculine, that they just like know everything and that they're going to give you an orgasm, like on a platter. and. Of course, the best way to make someone come is just to ask, like, what feels good for you? But bizarrely, like, that question is, like, pretty much off, for sure. off the table. And I, and I know, like, if, if I ask someone that or I'm asked that, that is a sign that this person, again, not only is good at sex, but it's also a sign that, like, they really care about me. Right. They're really interested and invested in what's going to feel good to me. Yeah. Like that's huge. And what's powerful about the Tango survey is it talked a lot about manliness and masculinity and norms. Um, and it was saying that 90% of Americans believe that men are still utilizing outdated manly norms and values. Right. No, I know. It's really, it sucks. Like, uh, for all, you know, it, we talk a lot about, like, the ways in which women are oppressed. But, like... Men are also oppressed too. Okay, we give you that. And I'll I let think, you say that. If I say that, it'll, it'll come out wrong. But. Um, women are sexually oppressed, but men are emotionally oppressed. No, but it's really it's true. true. Like I feel like men can't talk and about we, their feelings. And we well. continue to oppress ourselves. But the Tango survey shows that men who feel more have better emotional connections, relationships. And our work is about how can we encourage that? How can we, as men and women, encourage that in other men? Um, and masturbation is kind of part of that, you know, um, taking time to feel something, asking your partner what feels good to them, right? Like slowing down the sexual process, caring enough about your partner to say, your, you know, your pleasure is meaningful to me. What's going to feel good to you? Um, and us guys, we have to stop shaming emotionality. I mean, that's one of the number one things that women will come into my office talking about is how do I get my male partner to be more sensitive, to not be so hard, to not be so aggressive? 
I was at a dinner party the other day and two of my female friends had just broken up with their boyfriends or they had broken up with each other. And uh, both of them were saying the same thing, which is that my boyfriend won't talk to me. Yeah. Like, I beg them to go to therapy with the, for themselves. I beg them to do couples therapy. Like, we can't talk about our problems. We can't talk about our feelings. And like, that really sucks. You know what I mean? It's like, I, and I, meanwhile, I'm someone who has my own problems with that. It's not like I'm like, the most emotionally evolved person on earth, but like that's why I like pay like nine thousand dollars to see a therapist because I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> good, good, but, good, it works. But then if I'm in a, a relationship with a partner who can't talk to me about what they feel, or like if I say something that ups upsets them, or if I did something sexually that made them feel inadequate or hurt their feelings, if they can't tell me that, right. then it's just going to be repeated and repeated, and they're going to harbor this resentment, and then it's never going to be addressed and worked through. Yeah, and that's, that, that is exactly true. And how lonely also does it feel to be in that yeah. kind of relationship? Yeah. Where there's never an exploration of things below that surface. You know, I tell people, you really know you're building intimacy and being known when you're sharing things that make you a little anxious. Yeah. Practice going into that anxiety and that vulnerability. Um, but Tango wants to talk more about the feeling man, and that was kind of the goal of the campaign. And the, the feeling more man is better relationships with their partner, they have more self confidence and body confidence, overall levels of happiness, you know, improved health. Because working on your emotionality and being able to be more vulnerable and present is going to have these huge trickle down effects in every part of your life. Mm -hmm. It's called being more embodied, it's being able to connect to a partner on a deeper level. So if a woman comes to you and says, how do I make my partner be more sensitive? Like, what is there like an actual way? Is there tools or is there a process? Yeah, I mean, it's hard because it, you can't really go home and force change on someone who doesn't want it. Right. So in those situations, I'd say you have to really hope that your partner cares about your needs. And I would say talk to them about the state of your relationship and how you'd love to have more vulnerability and emotionality and coming together as a couple to do some couples work. Mm -hmm. But more important, I say this to the guys, if your partner says to you, and I also say this to women as well, if your partner says to you, I'd love to have more, more vulnerability and more emotionality, that's a sign of care. That's a sign that they want you know, a deeper relationship. Be willing to do that. And that's kind of part of what Tango, Tango's campaign is, is about getting men less embarrassed about showing their emotions. Yeah, and sex is, is a really good starting point, right? Because I do feel like for everyone, but especially for men, like sex is the sort of this amazing bubble where you are allowed to have, you know, you're touching, you're like, you're more vulnerable. It's like naturally more sensitive. It's sort of like this amazing little bubble where you can kind of like be another person, right? Or like be a different yeah. version of yourself. Yeah. So I feel like talking about sex or and especially talking about sex kind of like after both of you come and you're in that moment where you can kind of like say anything like that's a great time to to talk about feelings right because sex is one of the most anxious stigmatized things we have in our culture and so if you can talk about sex and masturbation which has even more anxiety tied into it you can talk about anything right. and that's why i love being a sex therapist because i'm working with clients and talking about a topic that cuts deepest to their core and it requires the most amount of body esteem and self-esteem that anything else will require. And so I agree with you. Like in that moment after sex, when you're feeling completely vulnerable and you've bonded in the deepest way, because again, going out for coffee or dinner on a date is, you can get to know them, but it's on a superficial level. It's just talk and a lot of it's fake presentation. But when you have sex with someone, their communication skills are in there, their boundary skills, their body esteem, their self-esteem, their intimacy tolerance, it's all in there. And that's why sex is such a powerfully transformative experience and topic. And I love that after sex, turning and trying to like capitalize on that and having those really beautiful, powerful conversations. Yeah, like men after they come around like a weird like zombie <laughs> state where they just like say stuff. That they don't well, say. guys have this thing called a refractory mm -hmm. period, which is where neurologically it kind of shuts down. And evolutionarily, I think that's just about if we were able to just always stay aroused. We'd never get out of bed. We'd never get to work. We'd never get fed. Um, so there has been that shutdown process. But I say to guys all the time, what you do after you come yeah. with your partner communicates to them your level of care and interest. And so if you get up and bounce, or if you like roll over, turn on the TV, that's a huge communication. That's bad. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. Actually, that's a good thing about sex ed. Like that's something in sex ed that no one ever talks about. After sex, like you should hug for a second continue the intimacy and I say to guys you might not be felt you might not feel drawn to that do it anyway tolerate that roll over look at them touch them kiss them communicate with them that's like a really beautiful moment to work on that feeling more 
Yeah. And also like <laughs> like please feel more because also even if you're um even if you're resistant to that, like maybe if you tried it, you would realize that it's nice. Like, right. what do you have to do? Imme- like the moment you come, like what do you have to do? Like you check your email. You have nowhere to be. You like to calm be. down. Yeah. Check your email in five minutes. Um, <laughs> I think we have a question from Facebook, right? Sorry. It's coming. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. How do you help females differentiate? between coming and having an actual orgasm. Oh, that's a good one. Oh my God, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be, an, you actually need to write about this in your column. Uh, yeah. This is gonna be like a relevatory moment. Um, so what people don't often realize is for men and women, ejaculation and orgasm are two separate experiences that just happen so closely together that we assume it's one experience. And for men, I'll start there, if, not if, but when a man can learn, and most men will never learn this, but men can have multiple orgasms really? if they delay ejaculation. Because once we ejaculate, that's when men have that refractory period, which is when we lose our erection, and it's gonna take us time to get aroused again. But if you can delay that ejaculation, men can have multiple orgasms because they're two separate processes. Um, and <clears throat> studies have shown that, and again, we can talk another time about why this is. I think it's that women are shamed sexually, women are not taught about their anatomy, sexism, patriarchy, toxic masculinity, blah, blah, blah. But women, studies show, often don't know that they're aroused when studies have shown that they are physiologically showing signs of arousal. Their anatomy is changing, they are self-lubricating, but when a woman self-reports, I'm not aroused, and the studies are showing, well, physically you are. It's just that you're not connected and picking up on that. Weird. Yes. The weirdest thing that you just said to me is that men can have orgasms without <laughs> ejaculating. ejaculating. Correct. I feel like I heard that once, but it was kind of in like one of those like woo woo new age spiritual things where I was like thought it, it, it was tends, just a lie. It tends to be buried in that world, yeah. in like the tantric Taoist sexuality yeah. world. And um, I've actually had that happen, and I've actually had full body orgasms. And I've been with partners, uh, men and women, where I'd have a full body orgasm, and they were like, what did you just do? And they're like, like, that was a seizure. <laughs> yes, it looks like that. And they're like, how do I do that? And I was like, practice. Um, and again, it's for another time to talk about, but yeah, you can have full body orgasms, men. And, okay, okay, and then for a woman, just so I make sure I get this, sure. like coming, does that mean that squirting? Yes. Okay, so if you can't squirt. Um, you can still come without squirting. Okay. It's not always a big uh, expulsion of liquid. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I just like, if you can't squirt, is your vagina broken or what? No. Okay. No. Good you know, again, know. For, for a lot of females, again, for a lot of cultural, biological reasons, um, it's, it's difficult for some women to orgasm. And we're kind of talking about that. And ejaculation is just another level of that. But with the right amount of stimulation and time and relaxation and, again, sex and body positivity, um, you can squirt. Okay. We could get you I'm going to have to take your word on that one. Yeah. Because it's been like a decade. It's like next level stuff for you. <laughs> exactly. It's season two. Okay. That's the next book. <laughs> um, question. <clears throat> is masturbating too much cheating? That is, a, that is a good loaded question. Wow. Yeah. What do you, jump in. What do you think? <sighs> this is complicated, right? So I think that, well, too much is subjective, right? Sure. I think that masturbating is not cheating. I mean, I guess everyone has their own boundaries in their relationship and maybe um, someone who was a devout religious person and Mm. and their their partner was too, that they would have their own set of rules that I guess I can't weigh in on and I don't want to judge, but- um, I'll do it, I'll judge. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's not on brand for me to judge people. (laughs) I don't know, always stay with the brand. Yeah, I'll judge people like later. good marketing at PR. But uh, I do think, so this is just like my own personal thing. Sure. I think that if my partner was masturbating like every night, going in the other room to masturbate every night and that we, our sexual Mm -hmm. interaction had kind of lapsed and I felt like their solo sexuality had replaced our sex life, Mm I guess I would, it would be something I'd want to talk about because I think it would probably hurt me. So is that the word you'd use though? I would feel bad, it would hurt me, but I wouldn't call it cheating. I would just say, I'm kind of bummed, let's talk this out, right? Yeah, it would bum okay, me out. Good. I guess I wouldn't I like think that. it was cheating. Okay, yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's difficult because 
it's it makes sense for some partners if they're not getting the partner sex they want they find out that their partner's having sex a lot with themselves to see i feel kind of left out and mm -hmm. if we're monogamous you're my only sex partner so that kind of limits me right yeah so a couple things number one um maybe the partner's more solo sexed not everyone is geared or oriented sexually towards partnered sex you need to talk that out Right. Um, number two, uh, you might have mismatched sexual desire where some people are, have such a high sex drive that masturbation is really important to them to kind of keep them in that relationship. You might also need an open relationship. It might not be the right sex partner for you, but I'm glad right. you would talk it out. Yeah, and what is masturbating too much anyways? Um, is that possible? Yeah, I would never use words like too much. Um, I would just say, you know, to a level that you're not comfortable with, but too much, you know, again, um, it's really healthy for you biologically. It's really healthy for you. In fact, orgasming once a day is really good for um, vaginal muscle tone, um, prostate health, um, lower rates of cancer the more you ejaculate. So it's really important. And some people are actually very phobic of it. Um, we have the sex addiction world, which actually calls masturbation daily an addiction, which it's not. It's healthy. You need to masturbate. So there's a lot of people out there that are really afraid of masturbation. It's a really good stress reliever. For sure. Like my impulse if i'm stressed out is to drink alcohol but actually often if i masturbate i won't even need to then <laughs> less calories amazing amazing huh. built in right yeah um we have a question i was trying to read it but i can't um what is the biggest factor in cultural differences about masturbation <clears throat> Ooh. um the biggest factor in cultural difference i think is level of comfort in talking about it mm -hmm. um how socially acceptable is it how private do you have to be about owning or purchasing a sex toy, right? Mm -hmm. um, in America, I think we're among, we're skewed among the higher uh, levels of sex positivity and sexual comfort where there's definitely cultures where sex toys are not only shunned, but illegal. Really? Yeah, there's actually some states in the United States where it's not legal to sell them as well, sadly, but yeah. I would imagine though, I mean, whatever everyone's woke now but like i would imagine that in america people talk about masturbation maybe less than in european countries is that true yeah i believe that yeah um i don't know I, it's good i feel like masturbation <coughs> like you said it's like something that i don't feel like ashamed of talking about it but it's just not something that is like naturally brought up like i think that we're conditioned to talk about se our sexuality and our sexuality we think of it as being sex with another person. Right. Because it's almost like uh, you're achieving something or it's like a, a point of like, not bragging, but that it's like cool to be sleeping with someone else. It's not necessarily cool to be masturbating. So it's just like, does masturbating have like bad marketing? <laughs> yes, and that's why we're trying to market it better. You know, talking about how the, the feel the feeling more man has such positive benefits and outcomes because he legitimizes and prioritizes masturbation by purchasing a sex toy. And again, you know, better relationships with their partner, more body self-confidence, higher levels of happiness. I mean, those are huge positive benefits because to be ashamed of a core part of who you are, your sexuality and masturbation is not going to make you be a confident person while at work or out on a date. I mean, think about that. Mm -hmm. Like it's a fear of your own body. It's a fear of when you're aroused or turned on or having an erection, doing something with it. Um, it's, it's just not good. And again, that's why I love working with Tanga and I love being a sex therapist is because if you can work on sexual confidence, that ties into body confidence and you can kind of tackle anything because of how anxiety inducing sexuality is. That is really interesting to me. Okay, so the idea that masturbating improves body confidence do you know why that is? Yes. Um, it's kind of like, think of it in a really, really, really broad sense. Um, we're raised to be afraid of our genitals. Okay. We're raised to not acknowledge them. We're raised to kind of hide them. Like not just with clothing, but to tuck it away. You yeah. know, if you're walking around the supermarket and you bump your elbow, what do you say? Oh, I bumped my elbow. You bump your vulva on something you don't say like oh it just bumps my vulva on yeah, the corner of that no. shelf right? <laughs> so we literally walk around freezing and pulling in and hiding our genitals and our bodies and so to masturbate which is to like look at your body and that that dangerous area your genitals and to touch them and if you buy a sex product where you've spent money to pleasure that right. really dangerous part of your body and and you and you honor it and you do it daily you're going to start to feel good about your body you're, you're, you're starting to put a lot of attention and care to the most anxiety-inducing part of your body, and you're naked. 
And we need to get more comfortable being naked with whatever body shape and size we have. I mean, sadly, I work with some clients that think they can't be sexual until they have a certain body type. Right. Or they can't be sexual or date until they get that job that they feel like they need to have to have the confidence, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so masturbating and being sexual with ourselves as we are is a really good way to just develop confidence that we are desirable, pleasure feels good, and then we can kind of take that out into the world relationally. That makes sense, because I also think that like, I have this friend who once told me that doing sort of like stripper exercise made her What's the, stripper exercise? Like strip, like they do um, like pole, pole dancing because oh, it like nice. does a lot of core strength. Oh, they, it does. Have you seen those moves? Yeah, I mean, oh, I yeah. tried to do it. Yeah. I like can't even let myself up. Sorry. But like that it made her feel like it was like independently sexual, that she felt sexy um, independently of another person and that it, it just reminded her that like her body is like, a sexual body independent of like whether it's being touched by another person and I kind of feel like it reminded me sometimes I feel like that during masturbation when you're like it does feel like having sex with yourself kind of where you feel sexual and sexy and then you can like touch yourself and it does I don't know I feel good about myself good. when it's happening you know and and know move when you mm -hmm. masturbate because again part of our sex phobia and body phobia is that when we have sex we often try to be as quiet as possible uh, yeah. move as little as possible. We don't want to make ugly faces, ugly sounds, be truly seen. So good sex is about making all sorts of sounds, making, letting your body move in all the ways it wants to. Start by learning that and doing that with masturbation. Like when you masturbate and using a sex toy, make sounds, move around. Yeah. Don't always use it on yourself. Actually move your pelvis and have sex with the toy. Right. Men need to learn how to open yeah. up their pelvic areas. Like we hold that area so frozen and still. And then we tense up when we're having penetrative sex with just thrust, 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 thrust. So using a sleeve is a way for a guy to learn how to have more mobility in his pelvic area and make sounds, be big, be loud. Agreed. Um, question. Okay. Is masturbating too much a symptom of lack of intimacy in a relationship? No way. Because as you were saying, like the more sex you're having sex with a partner, the more masturbation you have. Yeah, I feel like that. Like sometimes I'll go through periods where I'm just like stressed, I'm not dating anyone, and I can go a few days without masturbating, right? Um, which is rare for me because how many days we're we talking? Maybe like four. I don't think I've gone that long ever. I think like really? two days is about as long as I've gone. Yeah, that's impressive. It's it's Actually, that's a good goal. Like I, and then when I realize it happens, it's like disappointing. I'm like, wait, when's the last time I came? Like it's like kind of sad if I can't remember if it Makes was like, me been a few days. For you. Yeah. <laughs> I know because you're just like exhausted and you're like yeah. kind of, it's almost like if I'm not masturbating, it's a sign that I've kind of detached from my sexuality. Whereas if I'm, um, and yourself, yeah, because if you're working so hard and you're doing so much that you haven't taken time to like check in with yourself or be with yourself or touch yourself, then your work life balance is not balanced. Right. It's and like, and I, and I feel like counterintuitively, like I was saying before, the more sex I'm having, the more I masturbate because I just feel like a sexual being, I feel really sexually charged. I'm more also more often like getting sex flashbacks, you know? Also, if you're really into someone, especially if it's a new relationship, you're thinking about that person yeah. all the time. So you're kind of horny all the time. So you need to masturbate more. Yeah. And I'm a big sexter. Oh, so really? like I, I stay erotically connected to people I'm dating all throughout the day, always building up that eroticism, right? Because it's, it's like the one gift I have with that person that I don't have with my friends. Because my friends, it's non-erotic, non-romantic. And so with the people I'm dating that I am sexual romantic with, I want to utilize that way of, of connecting and going deeper. Um, Do you send pictures? Hell yeah, and videos. Yeah, yeah, I mean, really getting in there. Me but, too. Um, yeah, no, masturbating isn't a sign of a lack of intimacy. It can often be quite the opposite. But again, if you see yourself over relying on masturbation, you don't feel like having enough partner sex, talk about it. Yes. What do you, what do you, I can't read. What would you want to tell the next generation about masturbating? Gen Z's. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like the generation Z is like so like offended by everything that they're probably like in some way offended by masturbation. <laughs> so this is me like being like the old person. Try to not offend them in your answer. Yeah, um, right, exactly. <laughs> well, what do you want to tell them about masturbating? Um, that there should be no shame in talking about it. Yeah. You know, allow yourself to have that conversation. Ask your friends if they masturbate. When you're dating someone, ask them if they masturbate. If they don't, ask them why they don't. Ask them why they don't think it's important. Um, I also want them to know that it's a legitimate form of sex alone, but also with someone. You know, masturbation isn't always something that's solo based. 
you know, not everyone's always up for penetration. And sometimes right. a really beautiful way to be intimate and sexual is to masturbate with, next to. There's times where um, I've dated someone that wanted to get off and I wasn't in the mood, so I said masturbate in front of me or I'll masturbate you. I'm not yeah. in the mood to really have a lot of mobility. I'll, I'll use a toy on you, a vibrator, if I'm with a guy, a sleeve. Right, and I guess like, now that I'm thinking about it, what I would tell young girls specifically as someone who wasn't taught this and kind of had to work it out for myself, like I said before, is that like masturbating is the best way to learn your body and there and like the more you can make yourself come and know what you want, the more it's easy to translate that to a partner. And like, for example, for a long time, I wasn't able to come during penetrative sex. Um, so I could come with a partner while I touched myself so I could kind of like masturbate in front of them or they could masturbate me, but I couldn't um, come basically if there was something inside me. And um, I actually kind of worked out how to do that through masturbating, like, because I had like, so obviously if there's a partner there, you're kind of like worried about if they're like bored or if you're taking too long, sure. you know what I mean? Like that's my fear, I'm like, are you bored? Are you bored? Yeah. yeah. And um, so you, when you have, when you're by yourself, you can kind of like invest that time in, um, exploring things and not worried about not worry about the other person's sure. like feeling or attention span so basically through masturbating um with a dildo basically i was able to teach myself how to come with something inside me yes how to relax yeah. and enjoy enough of the pressure no but that's beautiful that's powerful that's a homework assignment i've given people yeah, that really? don't enjoy penetrative sex or it doesn't feel good um but the other thing i'd say about masturbation is take time we tend to like rush and we right. tend to make it like, I just, this goal is just to get off as soon as possible, as quick as possible. No, don't do that. Like learn to allow it to flow. Again, make noise, move around, and then do the same when you have sex with your partners. Because if we rush and we rush and we rush, we're always tensing our bodies and our genitals. And we have like really constricted pelvises and genitals because of that. So take time and slow down. Should you like don't rush anywhere. set time aside for it? Like put it in your totally, iCal? Totally. <laughs> You should see my eye count. It's like masturbation uh, time. Masturbation uh, time. <laughs> the bell's really? always going off. It's time to masturbate. I'm like, I gotta go, guys. Uh, we have another question. Um, why does such a stigma still remain? Bum, 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 bum. About masturbation? Is it because we live in a sex negative society? Sure is. <laughs> and we body shame. And we don't often con connect those two. But you can't shame a biological function or masturbation without calling it body shame. We're, we're not comfortable um, acknowledging and, and honoring all parts of our bodies, right? We're so yeah. phobic of genitals. We don't want to talk about it. We use words for it that aren't the real words. We're like, those parts are over there. And we hide it and we cover it. It's body shaming. Also, it's like, even, okay, so again, I have religious parents and even with them, you know, I'm a fully fledged adult now that I can talk to them about sex to a degree. Sure. You know, it's like, obviously like I'm having sex with my partner. I can talk about that or like, um, can talk about s sex drive to a degree. I don't know. The, at least sex can be acknowledged, right? You talk right. about sex in movies, blah, blah, blah. Masturbating. I don't think I've ever said the word <laughs> masturbation or my parents ever. And I don't think I will. It's just like not something that people talk about. Right. And now you can, because you've worked with Tanga, you can, yeah. Kind of fold in that conversation. Know, but it's, it's an interesting job. thing. Why, why do you think you don't? Why do you think you'll talk about relational partnered sex, but masturbation feels like a crossing over a threshold? Too um, personal? Because it's sometimes just about you? Yeah, it's like just about you. I don't know, in a way that there's like a self-indulgent component. Sure. Um, it feels like when you talk about sex, it can be sort of hot you can talk about the other person um you can talk, talk about how they made you feel you could also it sex can also be kind of like goofy like there could be like a funny story that happened yeah. during sex like lol this <laughs> happened like when we were having sex like i don't know he said this weird thing or i don't know like s masturbation doesn't seem like it sort of lends itself to being like a, like a good dinner party story like this crazy thing happened when i was masturbating the other day like crazy <laughs> yeah. things don't really happen when you masturbate or maybe i'm just doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> when I masturbated on a plane, that's a good but story. But that's why I think it's such a powerful thing is like make it a topic of conversation because it's a, just an ultimate sign of like confidence and resistance to that sex negativity in our culture. We're yeah. just like, I'm not willing to participate. And especially for women. I think it's one of the most female, one of the most powerful forms of female empowerment is to talk about it and to own that and acknowledge that. I'm just going to start talking about it at work and everyone's going to be like, you're a me too. I'm <laughs> just like start talking about masturbation with strangers. And with that, we have another question. <laughs> yeah. What do you want people to take away from Facebook Live regarding masturbation? It's a huge value for you and for the world. And again, the feeling more man. Um, 
you know, people that masturbate more touch of their feelings, better relationships, better overall health, um, more body and self-confidence, just that it has a huge impact. Yeah, and also I think what I, I grew up feeling like masturbation is something that you can like do by yourself and like you can do it with your hand and it's fine like that. And like, I, I do still believe that, but I find that actually investing in sex toys that are good and like don't break and like that feel good and are healthy and, and like made of good materials. Toxic, yeah, yeah. Components. It's like investing in your sexuality. It's kind of like, I'm not just gonna wear rags because I like care about how I look. So right. like, I, I do feel like investing in your sexuality in some way like makes it more sacred. Like if you have like something that you, like a toy that you value, you're gonna take good care of it and it's gonna be almost like kind of ritualistic in a way. Like that sounds like over the top. Oh yeah, no, I value myself enough to purchase a product that's going to do something beneficial for me and feel really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a powerful sign of self-esteem. Yeah, and just like for me, truly like, when a guy is not intimidated or threatened by my vibrator, or and when a guy is like open to using sex toys in general during sex, it, it's just such a good sign for me. Like, and when they are intimidated or threatened, it's like kind of a red flag because it's just like, you want someone who's going to be like open and adventurous and who's going to like want to experiment with you. And like, if, and like you said, if you're in a long-term monogamous relationship, like you kind of need to like change stuff up sometimes. For sure. And adding sex toys is a really great and like simple way of doing that that isn't like, okay, now I'm gonna like hit you with an yeah. object. You and know that's why, I mean? and that's why like I like having them out to be seen because I want to have that conversation with partners about sexual health and wellness and pleasure. Right. And so, Again, we today we're talking about Tanga's global survey, and you can read more about that for yourself at www.feelmore.global. And if you want to get more info from Tanga on social media, you can. I'm going to read you their handles. Twitter at Tanga underscore global. Facebook is Tanga global. Instagram is Tanga underscore global. And YouTube is Tanga channel. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. Bye.